Officials in Arkansas started searching for Sydney Sutherland, a 25-year-old nurse, on August 19th, after she seemingly vanished not far from her home in Jackson County. Sydney's boyfriend, Alex, became concerned and alerted local authorities when Sydney went for a routine jog and failed to return home in the middle of the afternoon. A desperate search immediately ensued as the whole town appeared to come together to start searching for Sydney. Locals quickly got together to support her friends and family. They formed search parties in addition to gathering supplies for those searchers. Volunteer searchers, in addition to multiple law enforcement agencies, took to fields and local roads on foot, four-wheelers, and even horses to find any sign of Sydney. Her friends and family vowed to never give up looking for Sydney from the very beginning. The afternoon Sydney disappeared, she was last seen on ring video footage, leaving her family home prior to leaving for her afternoon jog. After Sydney was reported missing, a UPS driver reportedly told authorities she saw Sydney at some point during her jog along Highway 18, but at that point, no one else had seen her since. She was allegedly known to jog on Highway 18 between Grubbs and Newport. According to Sydney's Facebook profile, she's from the very small town of Grubbs. Her Facebook profile also states she attended the rather small Tuckerman High School and ultimately continued her education to become a nurse at a local medical center. It's quite apparent Sydney was your all-around girl next door, who loved dogs, helping others and those that were close to her. Sydney's loved ones immediately got to work trying to spread her photo across social media to spread the word of their missing loved one. It was quite clear Sydney was not prepared to do much more than jog on her last known trip outside of her home as it was reported the only things that appeared to be missing were Sydney, her phone and her smart watch. The evening came and went with little developments until a little over 24 hours after Sydney went missing. At some point the evening after she seemingly vanished, it was reported Sydney's cell phone had been found a short distance, approximately a quarter of a mile from her home, around where Sydney was last known to be jogging. Interestingly enough, Sydney's phone was said to have had no damage to it, but there was still no sign of Sydney. Well, that is until August 21st. Law enforcement had just held a scheduled press conference discussing Sydney's disappearance and the latest developments when it started circulating on social media that another item of Sydney's had been found, possibly a bracelet. At that point, it was being discussed that parts of a road were being closed off around where said item had been found. Within a matter of minutes, it seemed as if word started circulating that a body had been found in the search for the missing nurse. Unfortunately, it was the news no one wanted to hear and the reality no one wanted to come face to face with. Sydney had been found. You see, there's something you should know about the town Sydney and her family are from. It's a very small, tight-knit community. You know those towns where everybody knows everybody. Well, that's exactly what the town Sydney called home was like. In 2018, it was reported by Wikipedia that the town only had a population of 353 people. Not even an hour after it was being reported that Sydney had been found, news started circulating that there had also been an arrest in her death. Apparently, a local had confessed to allegedly hitting this beautiful young woman with his vehicle while she was jogging. Sources were saying he allegedly admitted to freaking out over the accident. So he decided to try to cover it up and bury her body. Some were even saying this man had helped search for her at some point in the days leading up to her discovery. But this has yet to be confirmed. As you can see, based on what this man is being held in jail for, they don't buy his story either. I'm not a legal expert by any means, but I have done a lot of research based on specific states and Arkansas happens to be one of them. Anyways, a local farmer by the name of Quake Lullin had been taken into custody on charges of capital murder. In fact, local sources started to say there were no signs Sydney had been hit by a vehicle at all and that the story Quake had been telling was bogus. So you're probably thinking, how can she say this story is bogus already? When there's very little information being released at this time? Well, let me explain. You see, there are only a few very specific reasons someone can be charged with the current alleged charge that is keeping this man behind bars while waiting to see a judge. According to findlaw.com, most states define first-degree murder as a premeditated and deliberate unlawful killing. But in Arkansas, premeditated and deliberate killings may be classified as either capital murder 
or first degree murder. It all depends on the circumstances surrounding the killing. Seeing as the charges are rather specific and horrific in capital murder offenses, the likelihood of this man accidentally hitting her and simply trying to cover it up pretty much goes right out the window at this point. As you can see, you can't just be held on or charged with capital murder for just anything. As you can also see, based on the presumed alleged formal charges to come, the likelihood of his initial alleged story being true in any way is a real long shot. Even if this man did in fact hide her body after an alleged accident, that would be a totally different charge in and of itself. Again, I'm not a legal expert, but to me, this already says a lot without saying very much at all. When it comes to the untimely death of Sydney Sutherland, although there aren't many details available in Sydney's death or the circumstances leading up to her death and ultimately her discovery, they have officially confirmed the body found was that of Cindy Sutherland. Although it was already presumed to be Sydney, officials confirmed the body had in fact been confirmed by Vienna to be that of Sutherland on August 22nd. Local sources advised more information would be released after charges were formally filed. Since this man was technically arrested over the weekend, I would only assume he'd likely see a judge sometime at the beginning of the week. After a little digging, we found out Quake is allegedly a married father of three, who was and may even still be friends with Sydney's boyfriend on Facebook. We also found out that Quake's wife was, and likely still is, friends with Sydney on Facebook. There are also a few other family members or other friends on Sydney's Facebook who have the same last name as Quake. Coincidence? Possibly, but doubtful. You see, Sydney was said to be very well known throughout her small community as she was very sweet and kind hearted. Some people on Facebook claim he was two years ahead of her at the same high school growing up. The sheriff also said the man being charged and her death did in fact know the victim. As you can imagine, this tragedy has been especially hard for this very small, tight knit community. The sheriff himself had even said he knew Sydney and that his daughters had gone to school with her. He also made mention of knowing the suspect even though the suspect did not live in Jackson County. An autopsy will be completed shortly and formal charges could be filed as soon as Monday. I'm sure more information into what really happened to Sydney will ultimately become public and we will begin to discover just what really happened to Sydney. As always, our hearts and prayers go out to those who loved Sydney. We hope they find some comfort in knowing how great of an impact she had had on this world so far. We hope this is the start to the very justice Sydney deserves.